Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. We uh, got some videos to do today, cause uh, the internet is already blowing the fuck up. And that it is, blowing the fuck up. Some of it's just fucking retarded. But, we're gonna start off, it's Monday, the 30th, so, uh, tell you that uh, I got some couple of things I'm gonna review here. Most people that know me know I like uh, Guinness, but like a good stout, dark stout beer. So, got my glass. Move some of my stuff here because we're going to review some stuff. What we have is something uh, found over the weekend, and I want to give it a try. Looks like it ought to be good. I don't know if you could tell by the glass or if you could even see the glass. They call this a midnight lager. So, I like a good stout lager. That's why I, I drink Guinness. I'm a fan of Guinness. My domestic beer I drink generally is Miller Genuine Draft MGDs. It's just a beer, champagne of beers, whatever. But uh, I like. I'm a big fan of uh, foreign beers. So a lot of Irish beer, Bass Guinness. Uh, yeah, there's some good German beers I like Stellas. Uh, you know, Heineken's and such, but uh, yes, they have this, uh, no, I haven't tried it. We just seen it in the uh, section there, so I was like, wow, huh, isn't that interesting? A midnight lager, hmm, I've never tried it, so this ought to be interesting. And yes, I have, uh, Guinness glasses. Uh, this glass was given to me. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, that's some, uh. That's some dark beer. One of these days I'm going to do a review on flashlights, uh, EDC guy, so. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, that's, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. You can't see through that. That is some dark beer. Awesome. That is fucking awesome. So, hmm. Hmm. That's pretty close to Guinness, man. That is a that is a stout lager. Very rich. Very yeah, that is stout. No doubt. Nice. Nice. That's not bad at all. Well, I think I have a competitor to some Guinness. That, uh, that is nice. Yummy. I also like fine cigars, so. <laughs> Very nice. I, any of my friends, uh, pick you up some. That is, uh, that's that's nice. Well, I was out. I've been cleaning guns. That's why, uh, 
You don't see any of uh, my normal stuff on. And what I'd like to start out with is uh, Christmas presents. Uh, these are the wife's guns. Well, you know, this one here. Uh, just to show you that we are safe. No rounds. We're good. It is a safe firearm. But, uh, this is, uh, Charter Arms, the Pathfinder 22 mag. And, uh, I've been looking for a 22 mag, uh, about two, three years ago. We were, uh, doing some ballistic, uh, tests, and we got into a conversation about 22s. And I referred back to a conversation I had, mm, 25 plus years ago with a very good friend of mine, somebody I consider a brother. And we were talking about 22s. And a bunch of people were standing around. And the guy literally had said, I ain't scared of no 22. Pretty much stopped me and him in our tracks. I mean, literally, our brains just kind of, that little bit of hiccup, that lie, it was like, what? Say that again? Ah, oh, you know it, man. I ain't scared of no fucking 22. We just both looked at each other and like, he's a fucking idiot. Dude, that's the dumbest fucking statement I heard all fucking day. I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't care what you think or how tough you are or what you've ever seen or done. Somebody starts clacking off fucking 22s in your direction, you're ducky. And the thing about ballistics with most 22s, if they're liable to hit you in the wrist and come out back behind your fucking ear. <laughs> Same with a high-powered 223 556. It's not the round that's dangerous, it's what it does when it hits you. When it tumbles, hits bone, travels. That's why they are as dangerous as they are. It's not like being hit with an M14, with a 7.62. You know, AK or otherwise. And they're slow, large moving projectiles. Uh, it's 30 out 6, 308. You know, these, these bullets aren't really considered slow, but they're, they're large bullets. They have a lot of mass to them when they hit. 45 hitting you is like being punched by fucking the Hulk in the chest. But a 22, a small, supersonic, subsonic, however, just a small traveling bullet, it's liable to hit you somewhere and travel somewhere else, tearing up shit on its way through. So that's what makes 22s very dangerous. But the ballistics on these little uh, 22 mags are now considered very good carry guns. They're highly accurate. This, this little dude, we was over, uh, Saturday we went to the gym and then uh, we called and made sure because we got these on the 24th. I went, we went and I let her pick them out. I told her, said, you know, I always get what I want. Uh, I always get what I want. I asked her, you know, what she really wanted. And for her shooting, you know, nines and forties and three eighties, they do get a little tough on her. And like anybody that's, uh, especially females, shooting large caliber handguns, they do get to be drag on you. And if you start shooting, you start off decent, and then all of a sudden they start, you know, <laughs> you're, you're getting flyers all over the target. It gets, it, it gets not to be fun. It, it, it's not as fun as sitting there, you know, keeping up accuracy. That is good. But, uh, so it's like, okay, you know, because uh, she bought me for Christmas, us, both of us. Uh, we got a new gun range locally. Biometrics, security cameras. Where we were before was more of a really 
rural country setting and a lot of older people and some really new younger people that with no experience well the stations were old people were skipping rounds off the ground skipping rounds off the walls hitting the ceiling hitting the bars it's a uh, you had to set up your own targets and metal racks get it all set up and then when you're done you know you cleaned up which isn't a big deal but it was time consuming you went there you spent you know a third of your time putting up and putting away and you had to if you wanted to move the target you had to clear the range everybody had to clear and then go out there and move if you wanted to look at your target you had to clear everybody went and looked at their targets so, but there, it got to a point there was a few dangerous situations. It, it, it got to a point where we considered buying body armor. And I'm not even joking. It scared me enough that she turned and looked at me and I was like, uh, we need to go. And that's because uh, there was a few people in there. And they turn around and just flag you. You're just sitting there like, fucking God. Jesus Christ, man. You don't realize what you have in your hands. It's death and destruction. So it got to a point where we just, it's like, okay, we would go very, because you had a key. We'd start going at 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning on weekends well, because nobody would be around. So we had the place to ourselves. But it was far enough in the country if something did happen, luckily for both of us, we have taken, taken medical training. So, you know, we, we carry around, I think I've showed it before, you know, tourniquets, blood clotting material. We, we have first aid kits and stuff that we make up, you know, for gunshot wounds. And then we carry them in our vehicles. We do carry some with us, you know, stuff we can put in our pockets, put in our purse. But it, this kind of shit gets scary, you know. It, there's You're so far out in the country that if something does happen... <sighs> It could go bad. It could go bad quickly. You know, there's no medical help. They're too far away. You know, by the time you call law enforcement, you, you start calling for ambulances. You, you try to do medical on scene. You know, if it hits a, an artery, uh, your, your chances are slim. So that was a big thing for us. Now that we're closer to a, a more country urban setting <laughs> don't, I don't want to say urban because we don't live nowhere near big cities we have to travel an hour or so to get to any big cities that's why when you hear me talk about it I'm watching the news from news in our circle and in our circle is the quads Rockford DeKalb you know uh, LaSalle Peru Peoria you know we get Dubuque we get uh, Bloomington you know, we're, we're in the center of a lot of these. An hour and a half here. You know, we're two and a half hours out of Chicago. So, you know, we live in the northwestern part of Illinois. So, you know, for us, we're very, we're very rural settings out here. But where we're at, we got a little bit urban. So they got a more modern. And it just, it's not really much further to drive. So we like the biometrics, the security... There, there's medical if, if something goes but the stations are all modern so if somebody's beside you and they end up shooting through the partitions they're all bulletproof so you know the, it's bulletproof in front of you it's bulletproof on the sides it's all modern it, it's all got runners on it so you push the button it goes out push the button it comes back there, nobody gets out into the range. The range, the range is a closed range. So we like that. So that was Christmas present for me. So we've been using it. It's not cheap, and I know why they did it was to keep the riffraff out. Fuck, you pay two hundred dollars a year a piece to go to a modern range. Now I can take my friends for twenty dollars a day. They fill out the paperwork. They're on camera. Everybody, it's all copacetic, so, you know, if any of my friends want to come, you know, I can take you to the range for 20 bucks, you can shoot 24 hours, you got 24 hours access, as long as you're with one of us, you know, which is cool, but we like the modernness, it, 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 that did a lot for us, you like the fact that we don't have to clean up the range, because it's got drop-throughs, you know, uh, when you empty out your rounds, they drop through, 
obviously I got a little conveyor and it takes all the rounds out so that that's kind of cool they clean up the clean you just drop your targets in front of the thing and it, it's really cool the young kid we've known him for a while at the gun shop that we go to so he started that uh, pretty cool but back to the this little pathfinder like I said charter arms well two inch stub nose uh, 22 mag double action so it, it, it's a double action you know obviously single action uh, swing gate I like that instead of being like the old you know uh, side gate so I like the swing gate on it it's fairly a, mo a, a, a modern style I looked at the Rugers I looked at many different others and yeah they're expensive 22 mags I was like Jesus Christ man I ain't spending $700 on no 22 mag and uh so this one here about half the price you know 350 bucks so if you're looking for one it's fairly light it's not you know obviously like a Ruger that's Scandian and polymer which is like really light I had a friend that had a 357 he got rid of his because that was a snappy revolver not like the 357 I showed the other day that I carried that's a that, that that's a beast that <laughs> after six rounds if they're still around they don't have to reload you can just beat them to death with it it's a chunk of freaking steel it, it, it is heavy. This here ain't so bad. Um, you know, I, I like the rubberized plastic grips on it. It's rubber on the outside, plastic on the inside. It's an overmold. Uh, single screw. If you look on the internet, if you go, oh, I want to check it out, and you look on YouTube, uh, there's not very many uh, good reviews on this. And... I don't know if it was what year productions they are, but they talked about back in here for the hammer spring that runs down inside the grip. There was plastic piece, and one guy took it apart and showed it, and I was like, eh, okay. You know, I took this one apart. There's metal in there. So they obviously fixed it. There was a flaw that it had that they addressed. So, reliable issues at first before I oiled it right out of the box. Had a couple of hang-ups on it. I lubed it real quick while we were at the range because I take lube with me. And I use uh, Lucas gun oil. And whether it be heavy duty or just a regular red. Uh, put a little bit on it in a few spots. And ended up, it started running pretty good. I brought it back home, took it completely apart. I cleaned it. That's why it's got, you can see oil spots on it. But you can see oil on my hand. But, uh. I cleaned it real good, took it all apart, took some of the screws and pins, popped the plate off of it, and found that there were some uh, milling shavings in there. So I would suggest that uh, you take it apart and look at it, get the milling shavings out of it. Ever since then, I, this thing runs perfect. I, I'm, I am quite pleased with that. Would I buy another one? Absolutely. Uh, it, after that, it ran flawless. Uh, we just took it out, you know, over the weekend, and then we I took it out again because, like I said, it's not too far. So, just to go check it out, probably back home cleaned it. Uh, twenty-two mag. Now, if you go look at the ballistics of a twenty-two mag, uh, they're actually real good ballistically. Uh, they're quite accurate. They're light shooting. Uh, I got a, uh, some of these. I couldn't find any spear gold dot because I did some research on it. The spear gold dot is a little heavier, around a 40 grain. This is a 30 grain V Max. It has that uh, red ballistic tip. I don't know if you can see that quite on that camera real well, but there's a red that red plastic ballistic tip that comes on Hornaday's. Uh, this shot really well, but uh, according to the research that we did on it, it uh, has a pretty good uh, hitting on it. 
I'd like to see it in ballistic gel. They didn't do any ballistic gel test. I would love to see this round. This and the spear gold dot out of a 22 mag. Out of a stub nose revolver. Into ballistic gel at, you know, 7 yards. Just to see exactly what kind of penetration and expansion it gets. But out of the muzzle, it, this is saying that it's getting uh, 220. At 100 yards, 1421. At 200 yards, 1,002 foot, you know, feet per second. So it, it's tra It's pretty hot. For but then again, it's a 30 grain, you know. But it, you would think that a little 22 mag like that wouldn't have the ballistic performance. But according to the FBI, which people have used 22 mags as a defensive firearm. So there, there's data on this that the ballistics on it are quite capable. Quite capable. Its success rate is close to about 77, almost 80% success rate. You get shot with a 22 mag, especially and the pie plate or the ocular cavity, you know, I, I, I don't know if I trust it so much. I, like I said, I'd love to see absolute ballistic gel, which I don't have any. I don't do that. I don't know anybody that does. So, but if, if I could and somebody said, yeah, they'd set it up, I'd give it a whirl. But, according to the FBI, that it has quite a success rate. So, uh, I... I I'd love to see some more testing on it, but w and this was a good three years or so ago when we were considering getting the 22 mag. Because, like I said, you, know, you, you start messing with women, and if they're not making great shots, it, all of a sudden it doesn't become fun, and they, they want to, you know, I, I don't want to say lose interest, because obviously if she's training, she's training, which I'm a big proponent of, training. And I'll be getting into that in another video about what happened in Texas at the church because I got I, I've been waiting for it and I got some I got some fucking thoughts on that. But that's not this video. That's not that's not this video. But yeah, this is uh, her Christmas present. This is what we went and got Christmas Eve. Uh, guys up there were really good. They showed this to us. I told them what we was looking for, what she was looking for. So, yeah, the, the sights on it ain't the best. I'm not really cool with the sights. But then again, it's not it's not something that you're uh, target shooting with. This is not a target gun. Like I told her, I said this is not a target gun. This is a carry gun. And she did pretty good with it. I, I have a little bit more because I like sights. I like using sights. I could point shoot. I'm pretty, you know, I, I have a track record of, I'm a bow hunter, uh, archery hunt, I have forever, and I can, uh, traditional hunting with the recurve, and when I was younger I used to really get a lot of people, <laughs> and they'd be like, damn man, you, you're really, I have a natural eye, I, I can, I can throw marbles. I I go to carnival games. The ring generally they tell me to get fucking lost. <laughs> I'm I have a good natural throwing eye. So Yeah, I, I pretty much hit what I point at. If I if I want to hit it, I'm gonna hit it. But I know it is what it is. I, I'm not, I'm good at what I do and it comes naturally. The, the more I do what I do, the, the better I get, but the sights on it are terrible. I'm not going to, the, the sights are horrible. It's just a little nub up there. You almost have to get it in an angle where it's completely disappeared and to get the best shots on it. If you try to run it down the channel, it, 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 they're not the best sights. Soft shooter, uh, it, it, it's nowhere near shooting any larger calibers. Uh, obviously, being a mag, you know, 22 mag, but, uh, yeah, it's a nice little firearm, you know, 
and all the grit and all that it's been cleaned and taken apart and all the milling cleaned up and what have you it, it the grittiness is gone it's positive it gets good positive block on it the trigger is a lot smoother at first it was so gritty it was terrible it's like man this is but after being cleaned and, and shot it's uh, worked itself in so yeah give that a look at uh if you're looking for uh, something for your woman your wife your girl uh, look at the 22 mag uh, this Pathfinder I like it obviously if you want to get into something smaller like Ruger that's lighter I don't know about smaller but lighter uh, soft shooters man they, they, they do what they do well but what we originally went there originally for this is this is hers and she's not real ready to be on out here or talking or anything like that yet hopefully I'm gonna get her where she even if she sits off camera to you know where she she gives her two cents but this is what we went after this is the Taurus TX 22 16 rounds got amidexter safety 22 long rifle she picked the she picked the color instead of having all black because like I told her it's more it, it's a trainer now I have to say she loved this thing she absolutely loved it she liked it when we were at the gun shop it felt good in her hands it, it, it feels like a a full-size pistol in your hand it's got a full-size style grip it, it's really <laughs> nothing to rack you know it's got a little picatinny rail on it it's got a almost flat trigger you know as you can see it's empty but it's got kind of a flat trigger on it got it almost a nothing reset it's literally a nothing reset so and it's soft it, it, it the trigger is fairly light uh, that's basically this is a perfect little trainer I didn't know anything about it till after we bought it and I was like ah, okay let me go do some research on it and this is a and it's a Taurus a Taurus TX-22. Uh, I'm actually quite impressed with this. When we were out there on Saturday, after we went and got it, and went and had lunch, and then went to the range, uh, surprisingly, I could obviously I had to come back and get some of ammunition I've had, because I got another cowboy uh, revolver that's got a mag cylinder on it. So I had some mag rounds and a bunch of 22s for my rifles and stuff. This little thing ate everything that went through it. Now I don't use uh, CCIs. It just, it's, I'm not going to pay that much extra for CCIs. Uh, you know, there's there's other ammunition out there that's comparable. I, you know. It's not that I'm a snob over it. I don't like it because... CCI is CCI, but just I'm not going to pay that kind of money for 22 rounds. So, but a lot of the, uh, I had some old Winchester Super X, old Winchester Super X, uh, some Remy tins, some uh, Winchester White Box. Uh, I had various little boxes that I've had over the years, and it, all of them. Now, the only failure she had was a failure to fire, and that was one out of 600, 650 rounds. So, yeah, she shot 650 rounds, and when she was done, she's like, oh, I think we're out. And I'm like, you shot all that? She's like, yeah. So, that tells me right away that she, uh, she enjoyed shooting this little gun it didn't bother her. her accuracy I was sitting there watching her her accuracy the sights on it are good sights even though they're high sights I don't know if you can see it because there was something about it I did not I didn't realize it 
that And it did dawn on me when we bought it. Not until after we bought it and I was doing some research on it because, you know, I'm like, Taurus. It comes with a suppressor lug. You could put a can on this. <laughs> it comes with a, <laughs> ready for a suppressor. A silencer. A can. You can put a can on it. I was like, here's a death cool. So that's why it's got the raised uh, sights on it. I thought it was just there for look. And it's weird, it's got front serrations for press check. Uh, well, uh, slide with the safety on, which is, like I said, it, it, for a little 22, that is a neat little gun. I'm actually, I'm very impressed with it. It runs fairly well. I mean, run great. She had no issues. I shot it. I shot two mags through it. 16 round mags. Flush fit. I said you can uh, rack it with the, the safety on. So, it, it's. It's a neat little 22. So if you're going to get your woman something to shoot and she's going to enjoy, be able to sit at the rain because that was uh, always the deal for us. Is that she would wear out and not want to be at the range as long as I would be. Because I, I generally, I when I stay, I, I'll burn, you know, three, five hundred rounds of nine millimeter or, you know, pretty much a scattered smattering of rounds. Forty-five. 357 9 millimeter you know I got a 40 I don't shoot it a lot but I do shoot it but yes if you're in the market for a inexpensive I was surprised that this little thing is only $300 taxes and everything out the door 300 bucks is what he charged I was like wow so all in total, it, it, that's, you know, the prices were right, but yes, this is a, and it's a nice little trainer, it drips well, like I said, I shot two mags through it, and that's spot on, right out of the box, spot on, well, I, was, I was shooting within two inch group, consistently, at 20 yards, uh, it, it, it's a nice little shooter, so, these are my gun reviews. I oh uh, it comes apart like most modern guns. It's real simple. Got even kind of captive. I was surprised. Uh, you see, it's really oil. I I cleaned it. Got a captive spring. You know, uh, it it just it is for what it is. That is a neat little twenty-two. Going together is a little kinky but you got to get it right in that little groove it's got to fall right in line and then locks into place like I said it's a little hinky I'm sure to get better as it gets you know wore in but the Taurus TX 22 if you're in the market for a trainer for I would say uh, younger people young even smaller like children if you're teaching them, because I taught my children at a very young age, I, we got VHS, VHS, yeah, old VHS tapes of our daughter shooting when they were eight, nine years old. So, you got, you know, they were shooting 38s and mini 14s and, you know, out hunting with their dad and that kind of stuff, so. But yes, that is uh, that is a very nice little shooter. So if you're in the market for anything like that, give them a look at. But yes, this is her Christmas. This is what I got her for Christmas. So maybe you guys would be a little enjoyed. Uh, but we are proponents of the 2A community. 
<laughs> part of that 3% lifestyle. So, I think I'll end it there. Uh, hope you guys enjoy this. And uh, I'll be back in a few minutes because uh, I got one I'm going to do on the shooting.